Roman Road on the edge of North East Somerset, South Gloucestershire, hundreds of yards away, as is Wiltshire. Very close to where I live. This Roman Road leads down to Morris Lane. This is kind of a spontaneous one, really. The plan originally was to get the video editor to bring me up here early one evening, drop me off near a little dolmen that I know of, and that I'd walk down from this Roman road down over Bannerdown Common into Foss Lane and just give you a John Rogers style walkabout really but as it's turned out I needed to get out it's my day off I'm trying to shake off the last vestiges of Covid the video where he was falling asleep on the sofa I think she might be succumbing lover um, so I just thought I'd take you with me on this now I'm doing this without a microphone so the volume might be terrible we'll have to see Yes, yeah, so I'm going to speak loudly and hope that this gets picked up. If not, I'll put music and effects in. I hate speaking really loudly in the country because I'm very aware that the one thing I really hate is people speaking loudly in the country, especially with machinery, phones and what have you. But there's absolutely nobody around, so we'll see how it goes. Just approaching the gate now. Oh, there are bats. Fantastic. <coughs> A total klutz. I normally negotiate such gates with enormous ease, being a nature country boy, as you know, grown in the hills of South Wales. But you know, when you've got a softy stick in one hand, you know, your coordination goes a bit weird. Anyway, let me show you Bannerdown Common. So, this is about 20 minutes' walk from where I live, um, and obviously, it's very overgrown this time of year, sort of time where it would be moan for hay if that was the thing here sometimes there's cattle here it's mostly just people walking their dogs and even better sometimes there's nobody as there is now nobody saved me of course so what are we going to talk about today well i have absolutely no idea i haven't planned this whatsoever so we'll just see what comes out of it so as i say i've been wrestling with technical problems with microphones not working and what have you and trying to get over covid i mean i mean these have been the repetitive riffs of my life the last week or so it's really tedious and i'm not really sure if i've got enough energy to summon up the muse but i guess we'll find out late last year in Richard Maybe's seminal book which is about 25 years old Nature Killer has been reissued in hardcover and of course it's still in paperback I'll just show it you looks like this it's all about the sort of you know the the need to immerse yourself in nature to help heal and cure you and you know I'm not big on mind body and spirit I don't go for all that you know oh I can feel the energy nonsense but I think there's a lot to be said for getting away from screens you know ironically and you know getting away from technology and getting into nature it makes you feel a lot better it's what we've evolved for on this common there are some nice benches which people have bought and dedicated very public spirited of them and it's absolutely lovely just to have a nice sit down in the beautiful weather there's so little light in this country and that's why I normally try and flee to the med my which I feel is my natural spiritual habitat but I haven't been for a few years hopefully next year 2023 I'll get over there at least once and do some filming there and I can sort of you know introduce you to my Italy perhaps my Mediterranean which is probably different to everybody else's You know, I think it's just important to get out and remind ourselves that, you know, the world is beautiful despite what we're doing to it. And, 
you know, solitude in nature is one of the most magnificent things. You know, you think of Rousseau, the reveries of the solitary walker. And I know I'm always talking about rom the romantic and the sublime. And, you know, the sublime isn't just about awe and terror. It's also about beauty and, you know, Wordsworth, the daffodils, what have you. You know, it's all about beauty. And, you know, that part of me is very much alive. You know, I'm, I'm sort of very affected by nature and the sublime both in the beautiful and the terrible way. Somewhere along here, um, on my left, there's um, a sort of carving, quite a large carving of an owl, a very sagacious owl. And I think it's only been popped there recently. And I was up here about a month and a half ago, one night with a video video, and it was perfect shooting conditions, because I brought the camera, and I had a self with me. And I thought, gosh, you know, I wish I brought the camera. And I wanted to take some pictures of the owl. and. Because of the overgrowth here now, you can't see him, he's obscured. When I read Nietzsche's The Birth of Tragedy out of the spirit of music, often just called The Birth of Tragedy, I was aware that this is something which had informed Jim Morrison's thinking and about how, you know, the sort of conflict between the Apollonian calm of classical antiquity merging with the Dionysiac frenzy, the two things in balance, you know, created great art. And of course, Nietzsche saw that in Wagner. I see it in Michael Moorcock, I suppose, in you know, The Eternal Champion. It's kind of a populist version of that, where I mean popular rather than populist in a political sense. We don't mean it in a political sense. Where, you know, characters like J. Cornelius Elric, Eric Jose Hawkmoon, you know, they're all really looking for the cosmic balance to get the right balance between order and chaos. And, you know, this is, this is something which informs a lot of, you know, great thinking and great writing. Rebelliously, I'm going to go off the path and cut through the long grass, which you can probably hear rustling around my feet. I don't think there's any adders up here or, you know, other venomous reptiles, because there aren't any in the UK besides the adder. Just make my way over to the bench now. I just keep thinking I look like Captain Lee from Below Deck. I don't normally do reality TV, but <laughs> I do Below Deck. I do Below Deck Mediterranean, Below Deck Sailing Yacht, and even Below Deck Down Under. I think it's that thing of there's work in it, there's glamour, the locations, and, you know, I just love the sea as well. I guess I should have been a sailor, really. Like in, um, you know, in the Velvet Underground, in Heroin, where Lou Reed sings. You know, I wish I was born a thousand years ago when he talks about sailing the seven seas. You know, I read a lot of sailing narratives when I was younger, you know, Melville, London, you know, Dana, that sort of thing. And, you know, it stays with you, the sea, it really does. the ideal UFO landing space meadow. Heading downward now. I'm off the common and I'm heading towards Foss Lane. There's an ancient trackway and it runs kind of alongside the Roman road. I'm not quite entirely aligned with it, but it's the same general ballpark and it probably precedes it, of course. Okay, so here I am on my bench enjoying my majesty, um, the, the glorious solitude, and this is what I can see in front of me. There is something about being elevated and high up. I mean, talking of Italy, I think of Tiberius's palace on Capri, which is up above um, the rest of the island, one of the highest points. And, you know, he lived there the last 10 years of his life and 
ruled the known world from there. And there's all sorts of different accounts about him, you know. Suetonius and Tacitus say that, you know, he was a um, debauched old man. There's all sorts of stories of sexual shenanigans, you know, and his cruelty. There's other suggestions that, you know, he just studied the stars and red and what have you. I mean, I know when I'm there, I just, oh, it's just sublime. It really is. It's just the light and everything. And, you know, trying to recapture some of that in Britain, it's all very well and good. It can only take you so far, but it is beautiful today. So there's a contextual shot to the bench behind me. I've just descended. I always call Banner Down Ballad Down because quite nearby there's lots of big one million, two million, three million pound houses. And, you know, it is quite sort of super can, you know, quite millennium people. That sort of thing, that sort of late ballard, gated enclave type thing. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't mind a bit of it myself, but, you know, it's not very likely. So I'm writing a story about that sort of thing, a ballardian story, which is called Eden Park. And that should be in Deep Ends later this year. I have tried to draft it before without success, but this time I'm feeling more confident. I've not done work on it recently because I've been ill, but it is going to happen. And I think at one point what's going to happen is I'm going to sit down one morning, I'm going to get up, the inspiration's going to be there. And it'll all pour out and I'll get the main body of the unfinished story out in one sitting and then tweak it and polish it until I'm happy with it. It's going to be quite a strange one, but um, I feel quite optimistic about doing something experimental for Deep Ends on the fiction front. My previous effort, Saucer Occupant, was pretty much straight ahead SF, but it is like a tribute to the Venus Hunters, a pastiche, and you know, it's one of those subjects, you know, in SF around him, you couldn't write about UFOs, flying saucers. It was deemed to be not done. But then of course Ian Watson did Miracle Visitors. Ballad and the Venus Hunters, so I thought I'd give it a crack as well. If you want to read it, it's in this issue of Deep Ends. So of course what you're seeing is me on the way back down because I walked up here as well and I have to say it was absolutely exhausting in this heat and sort of post-Covid but you know it has made me feel great you know it has to me the world of good you know and you you have to get away from YouTube sometimes and you have to get away from screens and just get out there so I think you know as long as I can as much as people want to see me doing things about books and stuck indoors what have you I'm going to keep doing out and about videos I hope you enjoy them please subscribe if you can and um, there's more to come yet so don't switch off yet hold on I'm aware this has been light on verbal content but sometimes you don't need all that verbal content you know I know it's a strange thing to come from a bookseller and writer but you know occasionally the thing in itself is enough isn't it There's an amazing book actually called um, Farewell to the Horse, which looks like this. 
and it was a bestseller in Germany a few years ago and everybody caught on over here but it's amazing it really makes you think about how you know in the last 150 years the number of horses in the world has declined enormously and how they've become almost an anachronism and it makes you think about how important horses were throughout most of human history so do pick up and read it's an astonishingly good book and there's a similar one called a short history of the world according to sheep which looks like this which is equally interesting So I suppose I should do some history. I, I really don't prepare these things and I'm not a full-blown historian, but as I say, Foss Lane, not a Roman road, near to a Roman road, ancient trackway. Bath, of course, famous for its Georgian and Regency period, but you know, really celebrated before that as, you know, a town of hot springs. It still has, you know, the Thermite Bath Spa now, it still has the Roman baths, which are fantastic, well worth a visit. I went a couple of years ago, first time for a long time. They are really, really great. And of course, what the Romans did, they didn't stop people worshipping their gods. They just inaugurated them into the pantheon and found a classical equivalent to merge them with. And in Bath, the gorgon-headed god of Sulis, a Celtic deity, and was merged with Minerva, Aquae Sulis Minerva. Bath was called Aquae Sulis, the waters of Sul. You know, if you've not been here, I mean, I'm jaded. To me, it's nothing. I've lived here for years. But if you've never been to Bath, do visit it. It's very beautiful. It's not great for <laughs> shopping these days. There are some good bookshops there. You know, hopefully, if you're watching this from abroad the USA, you'll, or wherever else you are in the world, you'll get up one day and have a look and have a nice historical day out. You as soon as you come into sight or sound of houses of course there's always somebody maintaining hammering away and of course because we've got some quite handsome dwellings around here people can afford to have all sorts of things done you know sort of fake bird scarers on the roof that sort of nonsense you know Just out of interest, the um, the very beginning of um, my ghost story for Christmas, the cold test, um, was filmed here. Part the, the credit parts right at the beginning was filmed here one night. And if you have not watched that, please do, because I would love to know what you think of it. It was my sort of attempt to do a sort of a M. R. James type thing and do a bit of acting, which I was way way too shy as a kid to try acting. And now I'd like to have a go, but. I feel my accent is against me because it's so strong and I know it's not as strong as it was. It used to be a lot stronger and it's been anglicised quite a lot. But despite my facility with words as a writer, I do still find it quite difficult speaking on camera, especially first takes. So I'd probably be OK in a film with a huge budget. So David Cronenberg, if you need a Cronenberg man, I'm ready. Okay, so we really are drawing to the end of the video now and I'm going to take a turn and go home, have a cold drink and relax. So thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this rather formless, amorphous, foundationless video. This is Outlaw Bookseller Stephen e. Andrews. Please subscribe. Signing out for now. Bye. One of the entrances to Ballad Down.